great to see you again. Today our story is 10 Ways to be Perfect. Now, I don't know if you recall, but our very first story, the story in the song, told us that the Bible is not a book just about rules, but that it does contain some rules. Well, this week, we're going to look at some of those rules. But first, I have some pictures I want you to look at. Do you guys know what this is? Yeah, it's a curb. Here's the street, here's the grass. So this is a curb. Pretty simple. Now, we have another picture. Right? It looks like a father guiding his child. Looking like they're at a beautiful location. All right, and here's our last picture. Okay, that looks kind of confusing. It's actually a map of Los Angeles, the biggest city in our state. It'd be easy to get lost there, that's for sure. Okay, so out of all these pictures, which one do you like the best? The map? curb, kind of boring, or this picture of being guided. Well, I imagine we'd all choose this picture. It's also got a beautiful sunset. Well, you might be wondering, what does this have to do with our story? Well, let's talk about that right now. One, I think that the most important thing for our lives wouldn't be to have a curb or to have a map, though those are helpful, is to have a loving parent to guide us. In our story today, we learned about God's Ten Commandments that He gave to His people. And another way to think about it, it's God's law. It shows us the best way to live. And it's a gift that He gave to His people after He rescued them out of slavery. Remember, they were in slavery to the Pharaoh in Egypt, and God rescued them. And then he gave them this gift of his law, showing him what he was like. Well, God's law is really like three different things. One, it's kind of like this curb, right? And if you think about it, a curb is to keep cars on the road, right? Because if cars were driving on our front yards or driving on the sidewalk, people could get hurt. Well, that's one of the things that God's law does is that it keeps wicked things from happening in the world. So that's important. The second thing that God's law does, and in fact the most important, is that it guides us to Jesus. It's a way to lead us to Jesus. Now I want you to think for a moment. If you're already in school, which most of you are, if you had to take a test that was pass or fail, and in order to pass you had to get 100%, and it was on something you couldn't do. Boy, that would be a bummer, wouldn't it? Well, guess what? The Bible tells us that Jesus takes that test for us because he's perfect. We can never be perfect. And so he lived a perfect life because remember, God's law shows us what God's like and Jesus is God. Then, when we know Jesus, God's law can act like a map, right? Imagine if I was up in this part of Los Angeles, way up here, and I had to get way down here, and I'd never been there before, do you think I could just figure it out on my own? No, I'd need a map to give me directions. So God's law shows us the right way to go. Remember the bullseye is God's love? I don't know if you remember, but every time we start one of our services, we start by summarizing God's law. And that's to love God with all that we are and to love our neighbor as ourself. That's the bullseye we talked about a few weeks ago. But you know what's even better news? Not just a map, but to have a guide. Imagine trying to get around Los Angeles with someone who lived there. They could get us there in the most direct route. And that's what God's done for us as well, because he sent his spirit to live in us and to guide us so that we can follow Jesus. Well, this week, I want you to talk to your parents. Ask them, say, Mom and Dad, Mom, can you tell me about the Ten Commandments? 
and look at what the Ten Commandments are, remembering that they show us who God is and they call us to love God and love our neighbor. And then ask the Holy Spirit every day to guide you. All right, it's great being with you guys. Have a great day. God bless.